I walked in the corner with the body screaming low. Never sold a back, but looked like Pablo in a photo. This gonna make them feel the way like Tony killed Manolo. You already know. You already know, though. I walk in the corner with the money on my finger. She might get it poppin', I'm my wife for the winner. I already know, already know. Roses. All I need is roses. Turn up, baby, turn it up. When I turn it on, you know how I like it to live when I turn it on. Can't handle my behavior when I turn it on. Too fast, never ask if the life don't last. I might pull up flexing like aerobics. I might tell your girl you're cute but ballin'. Standing on the table, you know who the god is. Turn up, baby, turn it up when I turn it on. Hello, and today we are doing Premier League predictions for match day number 29 of the 2021 to 22 season. That was, of course, the song of the weekend. It's Roses by a very suitable off, um, author. author. Um, that is, of course, the match this weekend for Watford, licking their wounds after. A 4-0 defeat to Wolverhampton Wanderers. So depressing that I didn't even do a match review of that one. Look, at the end of the day, what more can I say? Utter trash. Uh, we'll go through and talk through each of the goals on these predictions. But yeah, it was just not worthy of doing a match review, to be honest. Because number one, it was a Thursday night. And we got a game on, on Saturday. Um, Sunday, actually, sorry. But, you know, if I do a review, the, the difference of, of days is not going to be even worth you know, getting much of a, a feel for the reaction from it. And also, it was just the most awful performance ever. So it doesn't even warrant talking about. Like, it was that bad. We're in the championship. Just shambolic. But anyway, we'll talk for a little bit more about that. Um, but that was uh, related to the opponents this weekend. The Saints. The Southampton uh, game is going to be on Sunday at St. Mary's. And that was by St. John. Bit of a tune, that one, Roses. So uh, do give that one a listen. Um, it's quite, you know, well known in the charts. Um, and that will be in the link in the description. So that's your song of the weekend. Uh, and don't forget, all the song of the weekends have been added to a playlist on my Reverse to the Hornet channel. You can listen to all of them and catch every tune and every beat of the predictions this season. But let's move on to what is the theme of the week this time around. And... I just got this feeling um, that there only can be one theme, and that, my friends, is a very serious matter, but a, th a matter that we have to keep, keep hoping, praying, and helping, and that is Ukraine. So, Ukraine, we dedicate this video to you. Um, what's going on there is absolutely distressing and worrying and just no to war. Um, so, that is the theme of this week. Um, it's a very serious matter and it needs to be stopped. Russia needs to stop invading. But um, I feel like, you know, Ukraine really needs a, need a, need a shout out in this video. So um, all, all my thoughts go to them. And hopefully, hopefully that some point this can this can settle down and that they can stop the war because it is it's awful. It's not it's not, you know, what we'd expect to see at, at any point in history. But, you know, it's just. It's disgusting. It's just, it's barbaric. There's no other really ways to put it into it. So my thoughts go out for all those Ukrainians. And, you know, it's just, I, I can't really put it into words. Um, So, yeah, thoughts go out with you. Um, And uh, this week, obviously, in this video, we're going to be talking through, you know, the, the, the action from the last week, uh, what's been going on um, in terms of the Premier League. And um, they obviously introduced a new Premier League ball as well. Um, that's been a bit interesting. I'm not sure I like it, to be honest. I saw it and I thought, yeah, that's a really good ball. But now I'm thinking, well, <laughs> I'm not so sure about it. So, yeah, OK, fair enough. The, the new spring ball to end the season and all that. Uh, it's kind of like kind of whitey but also like light blue and then it's got red kind of panels on it but it almost looks like like the OG kind of football where you know back in the day they'd have like and it's like almost reminds me of like FIFA like the default like football where it's just like it's not really sponsored by anyone but it's just got like weird colours and it's just the the hexagon 
the pentagon shape, I should say. Um, you know, it's just it's an odd one. But you know, that's the Premier League for you. Um, do what you like. They got the power. Um, but of course, um, Chelsea haven't seemed to have the power at the moment because Roman Abramovich is uh, starting to um, to pedal back on on his uh, on his ownership there, and uh, it's it's a very very odd one. Um, I don't see you know how he's how he's done this, but he's trying to cover his own back basically with what's going on with Russia, um, and you know he's he's basically trying to say well, you know if this all goes you know, to, to pot and I, I lose the investment, then he's kind of thinking, well, I'll pass it on to someone else. But I don't know, it's dodgy. So Chelsea need to sort that out and they've got a lot of change going on off the pitch. In terms of on the pitch, they did do well and they beat Ch uh, the game against Norwich on Thursday night. So let's just quickly touch on match week 28 in the predictions and how we got on. And we were very happy with, um, you know, some of the previous weeks. We had a stinker in match week 27, if you remember, three points so we were like, come on, let's get at least one correct score. That would be a bit of a nice welcome back. And we did. Norwich City won, Brentford 3. Bang on. So we'll take that. Also, a correct result in the Chelsea win um, up at Turf Moor. We said 3-0. It was 4. So close cigar there. Um, we did actually predict a 4-0 Chelsea win this week. Um, but I actually went for it in the Norwich game. So unlucky there. Um, it tended it to be 3-1 in the, in the Norwich game. So, uh, again, another point. Yeah, it's healthy enough. Seven points. Southampton Newcastle, that was a bit of a shock for me. Um, I honestly thought Southampton at home, they would be confident enough to, to put a few past Newcastle. And I thought Ward Prowse, who always seemed to score against the Magpies, would again be on the score sheet. But no, Newcastle, they they were pretty much already safe before this game, just the form that Eddie Howe has got them going into. Um, with the players like Trippier, obviously before he got injured, he was doing well. And Fraser has now come into a bit of form. Um, you know, Willock came into a bit of form a few weeks ago. So... You know, Newcastle have, have gained some momentum. And finally, Chris Wood has his goal uh, in the Newcastle shirt. And also, what a first goal for Bruno Guimarães. The Guimarães midfielder who look, arrived from Lyon was benched for a long time. And everyone's doubting him. And look, fair enough. I take my words back. He's proved everyone wrong. Um, and he's actually played some minutes. But it's it's a great goal. Like, for his first ever Newcastle goal, that is just fair enough for the technique. From the back heel volley, I mean... You just got to think fair play for you. But 2-1 um, against Southampton, obviously the winning goal uh, in the end coming importantly for Newcastle. But still, like I say, I feel like they they were pretty much already safe. They've kind of bought their way out of the situation. Eddie Howe's come in and it's, he's improved them. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, good good win for Newcastle for sure. They were they were certainly um, fair enough for that, for that win. Um, and Gunamaya has got, of course, the winner. So... Um, yeah, interesting stuff, really. I think um, that was not what I expected. I also did expect an Arsenal win. Uh, I got that correct, but obviously the score not quite right. I said 3-1 Arsenal. It was 2-3 to Arsenal. So, you know, Watford exceeded my expectations in that game. Um, they certainly didn't in the Wolves game, for sure. Um, <laughs> Villa against Southampton. Uh, well, that was a bit of a weird one because I thought that would be a high scorer. but uh, and I only thought it would be a high scorer for both teams, but it was actually a 4-0 thrashing of Southampton. Um, great game from Villa. Coutinho looking very lively, um, you got to say, and, and, and back to goals for Ollie Watkins. That's going to be massive back-to-back -back goals um, after the Brighton match. So, um, yeah, um, playing Ings and Watkins up against uh, Southampton you know, together, it's just, it just much, much better. So, general why Gerrard didn't do that. Um, sooner, but I guess he's trying to facilitate the full the the wingers and the the shape. But um, no points to me there. Leeds Villa, um, obviously this was the second game for Aston Villa. They they absolutely blitzed past Leeds United. Look, you got a feel for them at the minute. They are toothless in terms of attack. We saw that when Bamford came on. Great to see him back from injury for sure. Um, but we saw that with just the quality of shot he meant. It was just so far off. And um, you know Leeds just they're not. They're not clinical enough. They created loads of chance against Leicester, didn't take enough of them and got punished because of it uh, with a well-worked goal from Harvey Barnes. He loves playing Leeds, does, uh, does Barnes. But um, ultimately, yeah, this is um, not good for Leeds and Jesse Marsh has got a big task on his hands to sort it out. But still good for Watford at least um, that they lost against Villa. Um, I said 3-1, it was 3-0. Uh, Leicester obviously beat them 3-2 um, in my prediction, but they only won 1-0. So at least the correct goal difference, three points there. Uh, three points in the Liverpool-West Ham, I said 2-1, it was 1-0. So again, 
correct goal difference. Palace game, we actually did predict a 2-1 Palace. So a lot of people would have backed Wolves based on the season they've had and defensively how solid they've been. But recently they've been off form. So um, that was a good prediction from me. Um, but then I guess I should have thought if they're going to lose that game against Palace, then fair enough. But then coming up against Watford, they were always going to win, weren't they? Because it's Watford. We are just an absolute embarrassment to football right now. So, um, yeah, uh, we were cut open. Three goals conceded in the first 21 minutes. Oh, it just it makes me so sad about this club. I mean, we have just not learnt our lessons from 1920. It's as simple as that. Recruitment, you know, but players and management. Um, I don't know. It's just all. It's the, the culture of the club is just is gone completely gone downhill. And um, yeah, it feels like Groundhog Day basically. Um, it's starting to crumble. Um, but yeah, we did go for a Watford win just because we felt. Oh yeah, okay. If we lose the Arsenal one, we'll hopefully bounce back. But no, we lose both of them. But you've got to say, the performance against Arsenal was really good. Like, the, the overhead kick from Cucho, what a goal. And then the next week, he scores an own goal. Like, that's just the life of a Premier League footballer. It's so, so varied, so unpredictable. Um, but ultimately, so Watford, right, to be that in inconsistent in terms of performance. The consistent thing right now is that we're not winning. We've only won once in our last 17 games, and that was against Villa. Um, so, you know, <laughs> Villa have probably been thinking right now how the hell they got beaten in both games against us but still it's you know it's so so bleak for us um the home form is the issue and you know the Leeds game at home is our next one if we don't win that football match then we're you know everything but mathematically down um I think we are pretty much down at this point because that was just not good enough against Wolves 4-0 to lose that was was a shambles um City United I said a 3-1 it was of course not that. 4-1 um, in the end. A late goal from Mares, um, capping his second. Um, with De Gea obviously going down injured. Um, <laughs> and then it just whacks him straight in the face. That's classic uh, Manchester derby uh, treatment there. Um, but yeah, very good win. Dominant from Manchester City, really. Um, first half, United were looking decent on the attack. Nice goal from Sancho against his former team to silence the, uh, the home fans. But look, United were never really in it. And... Um, City are just so, so levels above them. Like It's just amazing the gap between City, Liverpool and then teams like Manchester United and, and, and Arsenal and Tottenham. Like, all right, Arsenal, fair enough. They've gone into their top four spot and they've done well to kind of continue it. But I still feel they're so far off anywhere for challenging a title like City and Liverpool are. Um, Spurs, Everton, we said 2-0. That was 5-0. I mean, what a win for Spurs. They are just... So inconsistent. I mean, it's Everton, right? You've got to kind of think about that. They have been awful, awful under Frank Lampard. But at the same time, they scored some great goals. Kane, he's back. He is back from the Kane we knew and loved from before. He is back from that kind of summer uh, hangover with the with the Euros and with the Man City rumours. Um, does City need him? Probably not. But like at this point, he's not playing at a club he deserves to. Like He is... He's greater than the sum of the parts at that, that Tottenham team, but he is just a great number nine. Uh, well, number 10, really. He plays in that kind of almost holding centre mid at some times. But um, yeah, his passing is unbelievable. His finishing is great. Uh, and what a great goal to finish across um, um, Pickford for that second one. Just kind of back across goal. You can't save those. Newcastle Brighton. Um, we went with a 1-0 to the, to the Magpies. It was, of course, 2-1. Now the correct uh, goal difference. We'll take that. Um, and then we have, I think that's your lot. I think that's your lot. So yeah, rounding up, not a great week, but considering there was more games than usual, pretty good week, right? We only got the one correct score, but from those games, from those uh, 14 games, we did get ourselves a very healthy 21 points. So we will take that at ultimately. Moving into match week 29 then, let's start off by talking about the fixtures this week and, uh, Thanks, of course, as always, for commenting your predictions on the videos. It's been really, really good recently. Um, but obviously, we did get quite a few comments on the Match Week 28 um, video. So thanks for that. Uh, Ballum said 2-0 to Leicester against Leeds. Well, that's unfortunate because uh, not correct score. But yeah, all right, correct result. Um, that is one point. Burnley, Chelsea. No, not 0-0, I'm afraid. Villa 1, Southampton 0. <laughs> Fair enough, but um, did get a correct result. Um, but just obviously a bit far off from the scoreline. Norwich, Brentford, correct um, result as well. That was, of course, uh, 3 1. Uh, Newcastle, Brighton also went with 1 0. So, yeah, a few co correct results here. Uh, Wolves, Palace, 0 0. No, that was not right. Watford, 1 Arsenal, 0. I'd like to see Roy Hodgson win that. Look, 
I, I, I knew we'd lose that game. I predicted it, but I, I really just can't, I can't see us winning many games in the future. We're just that poor. Um, the thing is that frustrates me is the fact that we have got a good attack, but we're just so poor defensively that it just lets it down. Like we're probably one of the best attacks in that bottom three, but you know we just cannot defend. We've got three clean sheets all season, I think it is. So really awful. Um, I mean the the Arsenal game. We we were so so good at the start. Like we we score in the first seventeen seconds. Like yes, this is it. We can attack it. But no, then we concede, and we're always one goal behind. We're always chasing the game, and uh, we're always so low on confidence. And that was clear to see against Wolves, right? Because the defense was awful. Like that first goal, what are we doing? We're just standing around, and Jimenez just slots it in, and then. That goal from Pedence, I mean, Foster, man, you've had a shocker there. You've had an absolute shocker. What are you doing? Like, just rose it and he slips and he's just giving it away for an easy goal for Pedence. And then the goal for Cucho Hernandez's own goal, I mean, it's just, it's unlucky, right? He's tracking back. It's frustrating. I ignore he pulls it back and it's just, Foster can't do anything about it. But then that last goal, I mean... I don't think Foster should be getting beaten from there. I know it's a great finish from Neves. Like, he's just done a Cantona on him. But at the end of the day, it's disgraceful. And we had chances, as always. But we don't take enough of them. Like, that King chance. He's one-on-one -on -one with Saar. He should be put in that top corner. At least something at 3-1. Something to take into next game. All right, we probably get relegated. But we take something, right? We take something that's at least some sort of positive. But no, the whole thing is a bag of negatives. And... That, my friends, is a team going down to the championship. I hate to say it. Um, Liverpool West Ham, he said 10 nil. I mean, that's amazing. Can I just say as well, Roy Hodgson, before this appointment, I thought, is it the right manager? Well, there wasn't much options, but is it the wrong timing? Yes. Ranieri was going wrong for a long time. Basically, ever since, I'd say, West Ham. So after West Ham, I think, start the new year, bring in a new manager. That's just my opinion. I know it seems harsh because we brought in Ranieri in October. So it's not that long in the job. But look, we were conceding goals so, so much in December. Like I get uh, the performances were really good against Chelsea and City. So that's something to take from it. But we shouldn't have lost against Brentford. We shouldn't really have lost in that manner, especially with West Ham were just so bang average. We were just awful defensively in that game. And I think if he'd have been brought in at the end of December, which he was when he went and had that job at Fulham, you know, Fulham were bottom at that point and he kept them up when, when he's got a bit of time to kind of get his philosophy in. And if we'd have gone back to basics, tried to just grind out nil-nils from the get-go at the start of the new year, maybe, maybe we'd have had enough time to kind of get some confidence from these clean sheets and then change our style of play or even get some momentum, right? But we've got no momentum We've taken too long to bring in Hodgson. And I don't think Hodgson is really taking us forward. He's, he's, if anything, taking us backwards right now. But maybe that's the, the players, the state they're in. I don't know. The point is, it's failed, right? Hodgson has failed as an experiment. And he is 76. It was a very, very desperate appointment. Look, Roy Hodgson, mate, you're not doing the RH signature, the RH initials, um, the justice it deserves, right? Because... We know that this uh, this RH is uh, is doing all he can to provide you some some predictions content and and uh, you know be a FPL Watford YouTuber, right? But Roy Hodgson, mate, you're not doing your part. So I don't know. It just feels like he's 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 got this kind of like clash with the fans. I don't know. It just seems a bit a bit all over the place. But anyway, whatever whatever we say, it is what it is. We've put ourselves into this mess. Are the football gods in our favour? Well, we're gonna have to ask a massive favour from them. Uh, and hope that, you know, a miracle happens because, yeah, we're in trouble. Um, but anyway, moving on. Let's stop ranting about Wolves' game because that game was was awful. I kind of just want to forget it, but it's it's hard to forget when it was that bad. But 10-0 Liverpool is what you predicted, Ballum. I mean, that's mad. That's mad. But, yeah, um, I don't see David Moyes to be a rubbish manager, um, but I still feel like, yeah, fair enough, Liverpool are going to win that one. It was 1-0, not 10-0, so maybe... Uh, you know, edit your expectations a little bit there. Uh, Arsenal, uh, obviously that was a, a defeat in your prediction, but you did say Spurs um, on the other side of North London to get the victory 2-0. It was 5-0. So again, no correct result, not too shabby at all. And we also had DK in the comments as well. Thanks for your predictions, 
2-1 to Leicester. Well, that's a correct result. Villa, Leicester, Southampton, draw. Nope. 2-1 to Chelsea against Burnley. Well, yeah, that's a correct result. Newcastle, Brighton, 2-0. Look, close enough, right? 2-0, um, but it was 2-1. 2-1 uh, to Norwich against Brentford. No, no correct result there. 2-0 Wolves against Palace. Nope. Didn't get that one. Liverpool 3, West Ham 2. Again, correct result, but no correct score. Uh, Watford Arsenal. Well, 2-0 to Arsenal. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Result there. City 2, United 1. Correct result. Spurs 1, Everton 0. Correct result. Wolves 2, Watford 1. Correct result. Unlike me. 2-0 uh, to Chelsea against Norwich. Well, you got correct goal difference there. It was 3-1, of course. Um, Southampton, Newcastle, 2-1. Correct scoreline, but just the wrong way around. And finally, Leeds 1, Aston Villa 3, just like I predicted. And just the one point for the result. So, yeah, those are your predictions. And I will now steam through roll my predictions. Um, and as I say most weeks, if you want to be like DK and get your name out in lights in the video, then comment down below your scores and I will shout you out in the next video. And uh, starting off, we have got the game between Palace and Man City. Now, this is a game I can see City winning and winning comfortably. I think Palace are a good team. They have been their bogey team, to be fair, uh, Crystal Palace for City in recent years. Beat them in this game 2-0 in the reverse fixture with goals from Wilfred Zaha and Conor Gallagher. Gallagher's not been in form. Zaha has been OK. Palace haven't been brilliant, I've got to say. Um, I was quite underwhelmed by, you know, their game against um, against Burnley. But they looked much better, to be fair, against against Wolves. And, you know, Jean-Philippe Mattes seems to be coming into his own since he made that move from Germany. So, I don't know. I think Palace, they, they'll think they, they, they can kind of stem the tide. But City are just relentless. Now, with Joao Cancelo out injured, that's not ideal, of course. Um, but I still feel like they have got enough. City are the to-be champions, you know, we predicted at the start of the season they would be the champions at, you know, for a reason, right? They are just imperious. And I hate to say it, but, you know, Pep is a great manager. So, you know, I don't know why I hate to say it, but I'm saying it's obvious that everyone sees that. But I just, I, I feel like it's it's just why City are always winning every season. Um, it's 2-0 to City. Goal scorers, I think, first for Manchester City, it will be a strike from Phil Foden who scored, obviously, in the away game against uh, Everton recently. But also, it will be a strike from a Manchester City fullback, And it's not Joel Cancelo for once. Um, it's not, obviously, Zinchenko with what's going on in Ukraine. I'd imagine he would not play this one. Um, but instead, it's Kyle Walker. Um, now, Palace, I feel like they will go for it. But I, I don't feel like they're going to get a draw. We could see a 0-0. We've seen it in the past, like, I think that... That game at Selhurst, but no, I'm not saying that. St Mary Stadium next. Southampton against Watford. <sighs> I, I think I said out of Arsenal, Wolves, Southampton, Leeds that we had to get two points from our from our. Well, no, not two points. We had to have two wins. I should I should say from those four games, <laughs> and <laughs> we've got two defeats so far. Uh, and what puts me in any confidence that we'll get even a draw against Southampton? Nothing. So. I'm saying 2-1 to Saints, <laughs> as as usual. Um, Watford to score first, as we don't often do, so that's a bucking of the trend. Uh, but Watford do get their goal through, I don't know, someone that can actually score a football. <sighs> Who's that? <laughs> not Joshua King, it seems. Not Emmanuel Dennis recently. Um, he's not scored since that Villa game. <sighs> I don't know. Let's go for a midfielder, because we don't have enough goals from midfielders. Um, and let's go for a little bit of Imran Loser with his first Watford goal in the Premier League. Uh, but he will get that goal on 18 minutes um, to start the first half on good stead. But look, we do this always. We go behind. We cannot defend. And Southampton score their goals, first of all, through a little bit of James Ward-Prowse, who scored a very good free kick in the game in 1920, which was actually the game that uh, Kike Sanchez-Flores was sacked um, uh, in that season for his uh, second uh, appearance as, as manager. And uh, the second Southampton goal, we're going to go for it. It's going to be a little bit of... Oh! Kyle Walker-Peters. Now, it is West Ham versus Aston Villa. Now, actually, Walker-Peters might be injured, so that might be a bad shout. Let's Let's adjust that slightly. 
I think he had a chance to score against uh, against Newcastle, but didn't. So Mohamed Salisu on the score sheet for the Saints. West Ham Villa. West Ham, in my opinion, although they've not been great, and although Villa looked really good against Southampton and against um, Leeds, I think West Ham at home, they'll fancy their chances. It'll be a tight game for sure, um, both looking up the table rather than down it. But I think West Ham have got to bounce back soon. Look, they weren't brilliant, um, it's got to be said, in their game against Wolves, but they got the job done. That's what they've often done at home this season. And in the game against Liverpool, look, it's always going to be difficult. They haven't been defensively brilliant, but I think they'll do enough to score enough goals. Even with Jared Bowen out, I think they, they can do it. So West Ham 2, Villa 1. Villa to score first, and I think this is actually going to be a goal from um, Villa's forward, Danny Ings. But then the West Ham United goals, I... I've just got this feeling that there will be another screaming goal from a, from a West Ham forward. Now, we've seen in the past, Carroll, I think, scored an overhead kick against Palace. And I'm going to see an overhead kick here for Mikel Antonio, who, look, he got back on the score sheet against Southampton in the Cup. I think he'll score a worldie. But the second West Ham United goal, we're going to go for a little bit of Manuel Lanzini. Now, let's move on to Arsenal versus Leicester. Um, this is obviously the first of two games for Arsenal this week, uh, and they're both going to be at the Emirates. Now, Leicester, they have done well against Arsenal in the past, to be fair. Um, they beat them in this fixture 1-0 last season with a Jamie Vardy goal, um, assisted by the substitute uh, Sengus Under. Um, but then, of course, they did have absolutely, you know, you know, comfortably, I should say, beat them at the King Power earlier this season with Smith Rowe and... Uh, Gabriel Mart uh, no, sorry, Gabriel, I should say. <laughs> one word, one name, leave it at that. Uh, with with the victory, very nice um, game there for for them. I think there's going to be the same scoreline. To be honest, I can see Arsenal. They're looking solid uh, in the in the defensive department. That 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 back four is is quite good with Ben White and Tierney in there, and they're scoring goals with Saka up top. So yeah, two 0 Arsenal. Saka to score, and the second Arsenal goal, as you say, it is going to be Ashley. Yeah, I'm going to say Lacazette. He's he's done well recently, I think. Um, and he scored his first ever goal for Arsenal in this game in 17-18. That was like under three minutes into the game. An unbelievable start to the new 17-18 Premier League season. Oh, take me back to those days when Watford were, a, you know, a best of the rest team. But now we're a championship team. Um, outside the big six, I mean, best of the rest. Uh, then Liverpool go to Arsenal. Let's predict that one in rapid succession. I feel like Liverpool will win. I know Arsenal have done well this season at home. Have they done well this season at home against the big teams like your likes of Chelsea and Tottenham? Well, yeah, they have. But I just think, you know, they beat Tottenham this season. They lost to Man City by the narrowest of margins. I just think Liverpool, they're not going to make it narrow. They are so, so good. And they're pushing Man City all the way to make it a very entertaining title race so I'm saying an entertaining game at the Emirates Arsenal they haven't been as solid recently as they have been all season but still they've been finding ways to score at the other end so Arsenal 2 Liverpool 3 and Salah to get on the score sheet the Mo Egyptian King uh, Liverpool will get a second goal in the game and that's through a little bit of Trent Alexander-Arnold then Arsenal get one back through a bit of Ben White with a bullet header then Arsenal's second goal comes from the substitute. It's him again, Emil Smith-Rowe. And the third Liverpool goal, we're going for it, Joel Matip. Matip or Matip, I don't know. But the point is, that's going to be a goal from the Cameroonian, who, of course, was at... Um, oh, no, he wasn't even at AFCON, was he? That's crazy when you think about it. He was so good. Uh, Chelsea-Newcastle, 3-1 to the Blues, I think, despite what's going on off the pitch. Chelsea have shown they are scoring goals on it. And the defence has not been squeaky clean for a long time, to be fair. Um, and that's been quite poor. But they got the clean sheet v Burnley, not v Norwich. Um, and obviously, you'd imagine someone like Antonio Rudiger comes back in for this game. Um, obviously, was rested against uh, Norwich um, because I think they've got Champions League soon or something. I don't know. The point is, they should do enough to beat Newcastle. But with how well Newcastle has been playing, I would not be surprised to see Newcastle get it in the back of the Chelsea net. So, Newcastle score first through Fabian Scher, who's been on a great goal-scoring run. Um, and then Chelsea get their goals through Callum Hudson-Odoi, 
if he actually plays these days. Does he even play these days? I don't think he does, does he? Um, <laughs> no, we'll go instead with a, a man who's really on form. It's Kai Havertz. To be fair to him, you just got to say fair play. Um, second Chelsea goal. We'll go for a little bit of Christian Pulisic. And the third one is going to be a little bit of the forward, Romelu Lukaku. Finally, he's on the score sheet. Now, Brighton v Liverpool. This is a game I can see Liverpool winning comfortably. Now, I don't think that'll be reflected by the scoreline because Brighton often do well against the big teams. I don't know why that is, but they just stay in it, right? They, they really go for it. And they were close in that Man United game a few weeks back. They were, you know, competitive. They had chances and United stayed defensively solid and then got two late goals. So I think Liverpool won't make it easy for themselves in terms of their performance, but they'll do enough. And they've got some solid attackers that, you know, Brighton defensively have looked really shaky in the last few weeks. So um, Brighton will be starting to look over their shoulder. I'm not saying they're going to get relegated, but, you know, their form has been pretty poor. Um, Brighton won, Liverpool two. Brighton to score first, though, um, and that will be through a bit of um, the fullback Mark Kukurea. Then Liverpool score their goals through Sadio Mane and Bobby Firmino, the Brazilian forward. Now, Everton, Newcastle. Uh, difficult one to predict, but I'm going for a Newcastle win. I just feel they will keep a clean sheet in this one. So, the second uh, Newcastle goal after that one against Chelsea this week will be scored by Joel Linton. So, 1-0 at Goodison Park. Now, Everton Wolves, I feel like this is the kind of game that definitely Wolves can get something from. Despite how poor they've been before that Watford game, they still are a team that are solid. They frustrate teams. They score goals sometimes on the odd occasion if you're playing Watford, uh, and uh, they, you know, they, they they were brilliant, right? They they stuck to the game plan, they executed it perfect perfectly against Watford. Um, whether they will, you know, rip out Everton, who defensively have been so poor, and they actually go for it for once, Wolves, rather than just sit back, I don't know. But I think both these teams are nervous, right? They're nervous because they know how their form has been pretty dodgy in the last kind of week or so. Obviously, this different for Wolves because of the, the re recent result. But before that, they were pretty poor. So, Everton need the points. We know this. And this is their home games that are going to be crucial between now and the end of the season. Richarlison, I tell you, he loves scoring against Wolves, especially at Goodison Park. And Ruben Neves loves scoring against Everton. And he just scored an absolute howitzer against Watford. So, I think he'll get on the score sheet. And I think Everton will get on the score sheet as well. Um, through a little bit of... Um, Richarlison, <laughs> I just said him, uh, but it will be a bit of a frustrating one for both sides, not really what they need from the game, 1-1 at Goodison. Now, Brighton Spurs, I'm saying 3-0 to Tottenham because, look, Spurs, they're going to score goals eventually, like, they're up and down, of course, but Brighton, as I say, are quite leaky. Kane to get the first one, then Son Heung-min, and then Kulisevsky, who's been in unbelievable form, to be fair to him. Now, Manchester United hosts Spurs as well this week. And uh, I've got a feeling Spurs will have enough just to get the dub. Because you, United have been so poor, right? They've just been disunited as a team. Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, but also, they just don't score enough goals, right? Ronaldo is currently out injured. So that's not going to help them at all. Um, but also, you know, Varane has been in and out of the team with, with injuries. And Maguire has not been playing well. And De Gea, to be fair... Has made a few saves, but, you know, he can't do it all on his own. That United team, it's just, it's just the talent is wasted, right? Because they're just not a team as a unit. They don't work for each other. They don't show that determination. They're just lazy. So, I think lazy doesn't get you anywhere uh, in football. And they're not going to get any points from this game. I think Doherty is going to score for Spurs. Um, he's really improved recently, um, the, the you know Irish fullback. And he's going to get on the score sheet. But then... The equaliser for Manchester United is going to be a bit of Bruno Fernandes. Everyone says he doesn't turn up in the big games. Well, for once, he might do. And Spurs get their second goal through. Oh, you know it. It's Harry Kane again. Now, moving on to Brentford v Burnley. Now, this is a game I can see Brentford actually winning comfortably. Now, that might be a surprise to some people because Burnley have looked fairly decent recently, right? They looked good in their game against Brighton away. They looked all right against Palace, I've got to say, but then they looked quite dodgy against Leicester. So I don't know how much you take from it. But ultimately, they were really quite second best in that Chelsea game. Like, quite, you know, massive gap. And um, defensively, they're a mess. So 
they will take some confidence from that Brentford. And, you know, they did look quite good against Norwich. All right, it's Norwich. But look, Tony's back in form. He's confident. I think he'll get on the score sheet once again. Brentford three, Burnley nil. Tony to score first. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. It's time that we had a bit more positivity in this world. And that Ericsson, yes, Christian Ericsson got his first Brentford goal. You'd love to see it, wouldn't you? And the third Brentford goal, we're going to go for Rico Henry. And finally, it's Leeds against Norwich to round up match week 29. This is a game I can honestly see being one-sided. But will Leeds put away enough chances? Yes, they will, eventually. Leeds score first through a little bit of Patrick Bamford. I know he said he missed an absolute sitter. And he'll probably miss another sitter and probably not score this game. But it's about time that guy got some, got some luck, isn't it? Because he's been injured all season, it feels like. Uh, the second left Leeds goal, though, he scored, obviously, in the game in the reverse fixture, and he doesn't seem to be getting that many goals recently, but if he does start ahead of Bamford, then he'll probably get on the score sheet. Rodrigo. Thanks for watching my Premier League predictions for match day number 29 of the 2021-22 to season. As I say, get yours in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.